Give it a second, because this didn't happen last time. What is going on? You are watching and listening to Tags Live, a.k.a. Talk About Gay Sex, the live edition. I am your host, Stevie. This is episode 483. Really excited to be by our special guest co-host, Teddy Alexis. How you doing, Teddy? Hi, boo-boo. I'm great. How are you? I am really good. It's an East Coast, West Coast edition here because you are in LA. I'm in New York City. And we have a couple stories that are going to like relate to both cities, which is kind of fun. And I'm excited about that. Um, also in this episode, by the way, listeners, uh, Cody is off tonight. He'll be back next week. Not to worry. Also, we want to let you know that our very special guest, Michael K will be joining us a little bit later in the show to talk about the brand new app to meet guys. We're talking relationships. We're talking hookups. We're talking friends and everything in between with the brand new app called Archer. And you want to know about it. He's going to answer all questions. He's on a little bit later in the episode. Stay tuned for that. We can't wait for that. But Teddy, Mr. Puerto <laughs> Rican, we've got sure. to talk about a really big hot topic that you know on episode 482 we were talking about divorce we were talking about all the people like billy porter some tiktokers that have all gotten divorced and in that mix was ricky martin and his husband well that was just two days ago since then there's been some new info that has dropped ricky martin allegedly and we mean that allegedly because <laughs> we don't have proof yet had an affair and apparently was obsessed with porn actor Max Bars. Let me give you a little more info, and we'll discuss. Things were getting messy among, amidst the divorce proceedings between Ricky Martin and his soon-to-be ex-husband Juan Yosef, as, as he alleges that the singer had an affair with porn star Mark Max Bars. With while rumors were let me just put my glasses on. <laughs> oh. <laughs> while rumors were adrift for years that the bear had an open marriage, a close friend claims to have confirmed this stating. Like many couples, Ricky and Juan had an open relationship for their marriage, they told the Daily Mail. This worked for them until it didn't. But since then, further reports from Pop tings have emerged that martin had a deep involvement with bards and had become obsessed with him well if you haven't seen pictures of of max you need to see them because they're i can see why he he's very well hung and very sexy <laughs> well the source speaking to the daily mail continued neither of them fell in love with someone else sex was something they engaged in together and separate with other partners they added that Yosef will be taken care of forever, and I read that because of the prenup, and will not have to worry about his finances. He's also doing well, we reported on on Tuesday's episode, in that he is an artist, has a, a gallery, he's only in his late 30s. I'm not, as I said the other day, Teddy, I'm not worried about them. They are both sexy, young. They, it seems like they both are going to want to work to, because they have the children that mm. they want to co-parent so it's not like either one of them is wanting to have full custody so that's good news if you have an open marriage and those there's been reports on that forever about those two and rumors of people playing around with them why would this potentially be a problem if ricky was m messing around with porn star max bars I don't think that's the problem. I don't think the open marriage is the problem. I think uh, something is broken in the relationship. But something I have to say is that if you haven't seen what Max looks like, you need to stop this episode right now <laughs> and go go him because it's a multimedia 3D experience, okay? I'm putting it in the live chat for those that are watching oh us goodness. live to look at him. And, you know, uh, Ricky Martin has a type. All of the men that he has uh, dated are, uh, they're an archetype. Let's just say that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I'm, I'm sad for their children. And uh, I know this, we're just going to keep it fun today. But 
other than that, it's kind of juicy because so what's going on with Ricky? You know, I grew up in the island and he's been famous since he was 10. And something that was always consistent with Ricky is that his personal life was always very guarded. And I just feel like with the stuff that's been coming out, it's um kind of messy, you know? And I am surprised by it, actually. Yeah, you and I, in our meeting earlier, were talking about the allegations that had come out earlier this year, which were proven wrong about mm -hmm. a nephew of his that claimed to be in a relationship with him that mm -hmm. I think were proven wrong. I'm not sure where the, that all came from and who even knows, you know, the impetus for that. But... Yeah. Maybe at this point now, he's in his early 50s, Yosef is in his late 30s, that they just need to be single. Clearly, they both wanted children. Ricky has, how many kids does he have at this point? Four? Um, he, has he has the, the twins. twins and the girl, and I think maybe one more, maybe four. Yeah. yeah, you know, he's going on tour this this year. He's on the Trilogy Tour. We were talking about it the other day <laughs> with um, Enrique and with uh, Pitbull. And I didn't so, know that. That sounds fun. Yeah, you know everybody and their grandmother's on tour right now, girl. girl. And I mean everybody. <laughs> but that one yeah. sounds like an actually a good one. I would go for Ricky for sure. And I just <laughs> think that Ricky is now at a point, the twins are... I saw them on a boat that looked fabulous and yeah. he's living his best life. He just needs to be single and maybe he did the marriage thing. And yeah, we were, did that. we he talked has about this. He, the yeah. He, <laughs> we're good. <laughs> exactly. I never saw what he saw in Yosef and it wasn't, I mean, I'm sure you're from the island and mm -hmm. nobody probably is good enough except for you for Ricky. But I, I, well, talking about that, let's let's talk about the poll that we have today. Oh yeah, we've got a poll on this. Now that Ricky Martin is single, are you interested in getting his roster? <laughs> so the oh possible... honey you know i'm really mm -hmm. interested and he also has admitted to having a foot fetish too like myself oh. and he says he he admitted in like a major market interview once that he often will look down first at someone's feet before he even looks at their face and he's dirty i think in a good way and i mean that in the most amazing way stated yeah. ever i think he's very sex positive and I'm here for it. So well, I'm, remember I'm... all of the he bang, she bang songs and all that stuff. But now we understand what he means. <laughs> so yeah, yeah. Ricky, Ricky is uh, you know a lady in the streets and a freak in the bed. So <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I am interested in getting in that mess. Yes, absolutely. Um, and yeah, I want Ricky to be my part-time lover. Come over, real Ricky. quick. Real quick, do you think any of these speculations that we're reading about will hurt his career? Mm -hmm. Or do you think that it's just part of par for the core if you're a celebrity and that we're just going to be hearing some of these things as gay marriages, some of them end up in divorce and it's not that big of a deal and he'll just move on and be fine? I don't think it will hurt his career at all since he's has such a big uh, Latinx Hispanic following, and those people are very, very loyal to their artist, so he'll be fine. Got it. 100%. I love it. I love it. I saw one of our co-hosts. Maybe he is... Um, maybe our co-host is in between his concert and Ted, um, <laughs> Cody, and he can join us up here if he wants to weigh in. Okay, well, we've got to move on. Um, we have to talk about this one topic that made Twitter go crazy. Vaseline, as we all know, is <laughs> been around for, I don't know, 150 years. <laughs> but social media these days is in pure anar anarchy recently because of what happened. So what happened was um, Vaseline posted two donuts and they 
they put one that was an unglazed donut on one side and they wrote before slugging. We're going to tell you what slugging is in just a second. Then they wrote, put another picture of a glazed donut after slugging. And can you tell people what slugging is before I move on? Okay, so according to the Urban Dictionary, okay, this is the definition, is the act of pre-coming and leaving a trail of semen in one's body. <laughs> and the second one is actually kind of like a, a more perf uh, situation where a sexual art is performing by a man, either on a woman or a man, duh. And they leave sperm in the back of the person without them knowing, leaving a slug-like trail. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So with that knowledge, two donuts, one unglazed, one glazed, and before slugging, after slugging is what they wrote. What was intended to be a simple social ad promoting their signature healing gel, Something became wildly suggestive thanks to their choice of graphics. Two puckered up donuts. And when I say puckered up donuts, the unglazed donut on the left before slugging looks incredibly puckered up like you know what I'm talking about. A puckered up ass. <laughs> and the other one is totally glazed over like you know what I'm talking about. Cummed all over. And so... I don't know if they knew what they were doing or not, but people had a lot to say on Twitter. Um, I have no idea what slugging is, but if Vaseline can get those pesky wrinkles removed around my asshole, I'm fucking in, somebody wrote. <laughs> <laughs> somebody else wrote, either someone has been slowly building up a fraudulent corporate present as Vaseline in preparation for sending this tweet or this brand is posting whole on main. <laughs> Um, there was a lot of other things. I have to say, I don't know, Vaseline, I had to pull my oh. old, I've had this old jar for so long that my OG boyfriend of all time, we're friends now, gave me this and I use it all the, it lasts forever. In fact, I'm going to put a little bit of, mm, mm. Like all, mm, I love it. Slug that thing, slug that thing. And then I was looking up an old story of Tyra Banks. I don't know, she came into my feed. And mm -hmm. it was like the 10 cringiest moments of the Tyra Banks talk show. And one of them was she was trying to do that Oprah moment where you get a car, you, you get a car, you, you get a car. However, mm -hmm. her stupid thing was you get a jar of her favorite product that is keeping her looking young. And it was in uh -huh. a box and it was a, a Vaseline. And it's like, can you imagine if you were in that audience and you thought, oh, my God, is this an Oprah moment? And I'm getting a car and all you get is a bottle of Vaseline, <laughs> which, by the way, I've had this one since the 90s and I'm still using it today. Not the 90s. I think it's really been that long. And Dude, I'm, that's I love expired. it. I use it, I use it <laughs> on my forehead to keep my forehead looking taut and okay. my eyes. I love it. But True. what did you think with all this? Well, the first thing I'm very concerned about your expired Vaseline. <laughs> um, you know, I was very triggered by this because my ex used triggered. to call me Lace Dona. In, uh, oh. You know, <laughs> uh, I don't know why, but yeah. Um, I think this is a marketing trying to be cute and not realizing that what they're doing has some very sexual connotations. Um because it seemed like it's very, you know, mid Midwestern wife kind of situation, but it's more like by coastal gays uh, demographic. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> yeah, I was living for it. I think it was hilarious, and I think but it's, it's tone deaf, our... right? It's yeah, I... tone. Yeah, but it's still it's still like getting the number. So whoever made the mistake, it's like, oh, but we went viral because this is gonna be part of the lexicon now. Well, you know and I mean? it also meant, it, and there's some queers on the staff and of the Va Vaseline apparently, and they probably suggested it. Yeah, I, this sounds to me like uh, somebody did Scotty from marketing wrong. And, they, and he was like, oh, I'm going to get y'all. 
with the next promo. <laughs> so maybe, maybe, yeah, maybe I'm reading too much in between the lines. It sounds like an episode of the Kim Control show that, what's the show that we were all watching right now? You finished Glamorous. It sounds like an episode of Glamorous, that this was an episode mm -hmm. of that, and I'm here for it. So, you know what? Between me pulling out that episode of, of Tyra and this, I am... I'm going to buy a new jar of Vaseline, which doesn't look like this one from the 90s, and mm -hmm. start slugging all over. And yeah, I'm excited. I'm surprised that's not made out of glass <laughs> if it's that old. <laughs> it's petroleum jelly, girl. It's all, it's, it's good. It's <laughs> Okay, okay. We're going to get him as a sponsor. Stop. That's the thing. Itchy, stop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes, exactly. My lips are good so far, so... Okay. Close up look on that. I think we have time to get to this one story that we wanted to get to before we brought on our special guest. And okay. it has to ask the question, do you live in one of the country's horniest cities? We're talking about America here. And I know I see you guys based on our recent survey, but work with us on this one. In December of last year, Sniffies, a pop that I actually use, a popular map-based meetup app for gay, bisexual, and curious men, announced its Sniffies Unwrapped campaign. And the year-end campaign launched on TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, and featured categories like horniest city, most popular type of group, and most important, most popular cruising location. Let me plug this back in as I got okay. I got excited like you did in our meeting. <laughs> yeah. Um Sniffy's users made 2022 our best yet, said Chief Marketing Officer and Creative Director Eli Martin, who's been on this show before. As we close the year out, we're raising a toast to all the kinksters, cruisers that have spent time on the map chasing their curiosity. So you guys want to know what the results were? New York City, where I live, took the top spot for the horniest city in the U.S., closing, followed by your city, Los Angeles. That's why we said it's an East Coast, West Coast kind of show. But not too surprising, Teddy, were the major cities. We're talking about Chicago, Dallas, Atlanta. The same five cities were the top spots for the Hospitality Award, although L.A. took the crown for that. The UK mm -hmm. came in as the horniest country outside of the US, followed by Canada, Australia, the Netherlands, and Mexico. All right. And San Jose, <laughs> California took the title for Rookie of the Year after seeing 1,394% growth in an area users and its neighbors, San Francisco, took the the top spot for most adventurous groups, porn and edging were among the most valued kinks. So there's a little bit more. I'll post this on tagspodcast.com, episode 483. But what were your thoughts when you saw these results? And you mm -hmm. live in maybe the second most horniest city. I mean, it's all fun, but, you know. I am kind of pushing back on these results, actually. Yeah. Because um, I don't know if, the, if they normalize it, that, this data. It seems like it's the most populous places will get the most hits. Like, that's kind of obvious to me. Having experienced both LA and NYC as a practicing hooking up person, <laughs> yes. you know what I mean? I feel like LA is way more horny than New York City. Really? Yeah, that's been my, ex that's anecdotal though. So this data is also not good. But in, to me, um, it's, uh, and we're going to talk about an app right now, right? Yeah. Um, when we talk about the apps, it's very hard for me to hook up in New York City as opposed to L.A. Um, I feel like I have more success rate. Yeah. <laughs> no, I hear what you're saying. <laughs> in, L in L.A. Um, I guess in terms of intention, that doesn't mean that New York City is not horny. It's just that it's not horny for me. <laughs> I hear you. I hear yeah. you. I mean, this might be a good time to invite our special guest to the main stage and see what he has to say um, about. And he's going to be talking. This was Sniffies. He's going to be talking about a brand new app called Archer. I believe I invited him to the main stage. So okay. hopefully he is on his way. Mm -hmm. So um, there he is. There is. Hey, 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 Michael K. How you doing? I'm doing well. How are you? 
Really good. Let me just introduce you real quick. Michael K, you are the Director of Brand Marketing and Communications at Archer, the brand new app. And in this role, you lead all brand communications overseeing PR, marketing, and social media efforts. You are a gay man, and Michael knows firsthand the shame and secrecy that can accompany queer dating and is eager to give the community a unique safe, and supportive experience finding connections online. Michael, welcome to Tags Live. How are you doing? I'm doing well. I, it's been really hard to sit here in the quiet and listen to this whole conversation. I don't think I've ever Googled so many things so quickly. <laughs> and I actually found on Vaseline's website what slugging is because I was fascinated and I had to know what was going on so for anyone who's actually interested i will save you the time it's simply putting a thick layer of vaseline over your face after your skincare routine before going to bed but i had to see what these social media managers were up to right and then you got to do a um what's the other way of looking up jetty if you look up the uh, urban dictionary version of it too and then you get a whole different definition mm -hmm. of it too yeah michael you need well, that I'm one on my work computer so uh, okay yeah, yeah. got it Let's we hear you. Website. now safe well, for work <laughs> <laughs> well, we are really excited about Archer. I downloaded um, it. It's on my phone right now. I created my profile. I know Teddy did as well. We want to get into all of the things that make Archer itself. But I have to ask you the initial question. Is it available? Where is it available currently? Yeah, so it is available for download nationwide across the United States at this moment. This month in July, we're opening up first to people in the New York City area. So for us, that means everyone in all five boroughs, everyone in all of Long Island, Hoboken, Inner Jersey City, so basically all around NYC. And the two of you are so perfect for this conversation because right after New York City, we are heading to LA and we will have hey. events in both cities. So I'm going to follow up with both of you right after this to make sure because our New York City one is actually tomorrow night. Oh, okay. Ooh. I'm free tomorrow night. So let me know after the show. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Definitely. Okay. Um, I wanted to do a follow-up question on this, and I know Teddy has a lot of things too. One of the things that I really liked when I was putting up my profile is that every profile is selfie verified. And what do we mean by that? And, you know, when you're meeting people, I always say on the show that I don't do well on the apps. But what I really liked about this one was it actually prompted me to verify all the pictures that I had put up and you required, I believe it was three and actually almost like a governmental thing, but in a really good way, because I knew it verified that it was really me. And I had to sit here. I'm like, okay, I look good in those pictures, but the sunlight was, the sunrise was coming. And I'm like, okay, let me do it <laughs> here now. And I verified myself and I'm in talk about that and what you were trying to avoid from say some of the apps that are out there right now. Yeah. So we've been working on this app for over a year. I would say it's been an idea for the past couple of years. And we, the team really looked at the available apps out there and said, you know, there are some players, some really big players for gay daters. If we were going to create a new app, it had to serve a new need. We didn't want to be a copycat app. We didn't want to create what already been out there. And we actually looked at our own experiences. So I obviously am the head of marketing for the app. I'm an openly gay man. Our chief product officer is another openly gay man. Our head of data is another openly gay man. So we're all brought all our different experiences to this app, which is, is really nice. And, you know, when, when I came out of the closet, I didn't come out till I was, I had graduated college. So mm -hmm. I was almost 23 at that point. I came out on dating apps. And the options that were available to me, at least the gay focused apps, really reinforced this idea that our kind of love should be hidden in secret. So I'm 22 years old. I'm closeted. I'm really ashamed and embarrassed about being gay. I don't even think at that point I could even say I'm gay. 
And I turn to these apps and I see all these blank profiles or photos where people aren't showing their face. And for me, at such a vulnerable age and moment in my life, I thought, damn, I think this is my community. And even with my own community, I have to remain hidden. And that was really triggering. And I actually turned to straight apps or apps that were more mainstream like Tinder. And that's where I found success because I felt a little bit more comfortable. I felt safer. So when we created Archer, we created with today's daters in mind. And this generation, Gen Z, millennials, they're very different than previous generations. You know, I think they're a little bit more celebratory. They're definitely more open. We've seen that people are coming out at younger and younger ages. So one of the core features of Archer is making sure that when you open up our app, whether you're choosing to look at the linear view or the grid view, you're only ever going to see a sea of faces. And that's by design. Um, and it's something we're really proud of. I love that. Teddy, I know you got a question, but we just should mention that <laughs> Archer is a part of the Match Group, which has produced apps like Tinder, Match.com, Meet IC, OkCupid, okay Hinge, Plenty of Fish, Our Time, um, just to name a few of them. Um, those have a really good legacy thus far, I would have to say, and, and not much controversy. So I think it's good that um, we created, you created this. So, yeah. yeah, I mean, I found love on Tinder. I spent the last four years working at OkCupid. Okay so I'm clearly a big fan <laughs> of the app. Love it. Yeah. Well, Michael, you are an award-winning marketer, right? So I self-identify as a polyamorous person, but I am single. So that means that I am polite single, single many times. <laughs> How can I market myself in your app in order to be more successful, you think? Well, we give you a lot of the tools to really self-express as much as you want. You can either share what you're looking for, which could be open to couples, open to single people. We also have a feature called tags, which I really like because in my view, it allows you to create a profile that you feel comfortable with. If that's a profile that is overly sexualized, great, own it and run with that. If you're someone who's more comfortable with sharing the shows you're interested in or the sports you like playing, by all means, go ahead and do that. And that feature is also going to help you find like-minded people, whether that's mm -hmm. other people who are open or other people who watch RuPaul's Drag Race. Um, because when we created this app, what we also realized was we wanted to create a space that is not only for people who are looking for hookups or long-term relationships or open relationships, we also recognize that a lot of gay men, a lot of queer men are turning to apps even when they're in monogamous relationships, but they're moving to a new city and they want mm -hmm. to find their friends and family. So that's why we're very social first. In the beginning, at the initial launch, you're going to see most of the dating app features that you're most used to. But in the coming months, as we continue to roll out in different cities and as we continue to launch different iterations of the app, you're going to more social media features come in. So oh, wow. you'll be able to upload ephemeral content. So you can upload photos and stories and eventually you'll be able to go live. You can have group chats. Next year, we're even thinking about bar integration. So finding your group to go to Rise or um, we go Playhouse, whatever the bar is. Well, I'm obviously naming New York City bars, but mm -hmm. the Abbey in LA. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, I but you say, know, oh, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Because something that I really liked having tested the, it's kind of like beta testing, kind of right now, right? Because it's not launch. How all the downfalls of other apps you really make sure you didn't have, like you can really change the grid of like, you want to see bigger pictures or want to see way more guys. Um, I like that. And also um, that going from profile to profile is so smooth. Like whoever designed your, your app and like the actual backbone of it. Uh, I hope that person is salary and is staying in your company. Cause that was a great job. <laughs> 
that is, um, I have to give credit to our chief product officer who I mentioned earlier. He is another openly gay man. I know it was a gay his, man. I knew it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and he has a really unique experience too, where he, he also came out later in life. He was married to a woman and had children. Um, and he, he's, he shared his story as well, but, um, he, designed an app that I have just fallen in love with. I think it's so beautiful. And I think what's really exciting to me is that when we had presented this app to Match Group last summer, so over a year ago at this point, that app almost looks identical as what we have just launched this summer. And that's after all the background work that people don't get to see. So we interviewed over 1,200 queer men across the nation of wow. various different backgrounds, gay, bisexual, queer, pansexual, you name it, uh, monogamous, polyamorous, and wanted all their opinions um, included in this app. And what they wanted was really reflected in what we had already planned on creating. We also partnered with GLAAD, which is an incredible organization. And we brought them into our office and said, here's how we're marketing it. Here's how we're building it. Here's what the product looks like we wanted as much feedback as possible so that anyone who does come to the app feels like, oh, I feel safe here, or I feel welcome, or this feels like an app for me. I love that. And, you know, you were talking earlier about when you put your likes in there, and you can put as many, several in there, um, what you're into, you can put your sexual things into, I was getting so caught up in I'm a foodie, and I like cocktail culture. And I was really enjoying that because I think the I feel with the apps the go-to is always in a more sexual nature and I believe me I'm we're sex positive here we're a sex podcast so I'm all for that I just think that's so obvious and so to kind of steer people a little clearer on interests and you can still look at other people's private profiles and see all those is really a good way to go so I really commend you on on that there was some other areas though that i was looking at that sound like they're going to be a lot of fun that i think they're out yet like um the healthy hub what is that all about and some other areas of like social media that you're going to introduce that's going to separate it from the the apps that we already know about yeah so um for anyone who's wondering I mentioned it's available for download right now. So what you can do on Archer right now is download it in the App Store or Google Play, and you can create your profile, and you can see other users, um, and you can also experience and play around in our Health Hub, which is a digital resource that is available both from our app, but also online. And it's I'm gl so glad you brought it up because it's actually one of my favorite features about the app. So again, we want to be a dating app, we want to be a community building app, but we also want to be a really incredible resource to queer men. So we have been partnering with all these different experts who focus on mental health and sexual health and physical health um, and all kinds of wellness. And every single month, you're going to see new content from each of these experts, which in case you're not checking it out on our blog or you're not checking it out on our app we're also going to be repurposing on our social media pages as well because we really want you to get this advice and tips but we'll have content coming from dating experts and sex experts and psychologists and psychologists public health experts so we really want to make sure that we are providing people on our app with as much resources as we possibly can um, so I'm really excited to see that evolve and, um, we'll also be having just like so many things to invite you to, we're going to be having a health hub event in September. So I'll keep you posted on that too, where we're bringing all the experts together just to have an open discussion about all the things that's top of mind for our community. Nice. Teddy. You yeah. I wonder in the, in the terms of, uh, so now we talk about all the healthy stuff, but like, how about uh, the more sexual and the more like, you know, people that are looking to hook up? What is set you different than the other hookups apps, do uh, you think? I think what's made the main difference is obviously besides the 
selfie verification, um, which big one actually eliminates catfishing because you won't be able to it's create a, big a profile one. that isn't you on the app. You just will be blocked and you can't actually go through with your profile. Um, I, I think what's different and what excites me and the team is that it is a very make your own journey. I think we don't always want the same things every day of the week, every night of the week, which is why you'll notice in the app, you can toggle between different viewpoints. You were mentioning some of them. So, you know, we thought about what do I want on an app on a Friday night when I'm at a bar? Is that the mm -hmm. same as what I want Sunday afternoon or Wednesday morning? Not really. So, we give you all these tools to navigate the app in a very different way based on what you're feeling, because we know there's so much about the community that's really fluid. I mean, even when you get into a relationship, you might be monogamous in the beginning, you might open it up midway through, you might close it again. So we wanted to make sure that no matter what you were looking for and what you're interested in, that we can play a role in your life really at any point in your journey. Yeah, it seems to me that what you created is kind of like that home base, right? Like that one first thing that we do on the internet, uh, you know, back in the day was the MySpace. And maybe this is our thing now. Archer will be what we've been looking for. I, I, I'm really excited. So no more torsos, no more blank profiles. <laughs> hey, and for, hey, hey. for anyone who loves the torso... You can upload a photo of your torso. It just can't be your main profile. And mm -hmm. we'll have private albums, so you'll get to do all that fun stuff too. We don't want to shame anyone and what they're looking for, but we do want to make sure that every user that you're seeing on Archer is exactly who they say they are and that you're greeting everybody with your face. Yeah, one of the things that I was enjoying was I was putting all my pictures up. I chose one that sunglass free no torso it was accepted mm -hmm. and then i kept putting three pictures up there and it said you could put an optional one and i kept putting more optional ones and it let me do that which i love um the other thing that i really liked here was you could click certain things that you would be looking for so i clicked friends i clicked dates that i'm interested in i clicked hookups relationships uh, i mentioned friends uh, the one thing I didn't click was that I've noticed on other ones was chat. And for me, chat has always been on a lot of the other apps. The, the reason I don't like them so much is like I don't want to pen pal. And a lot of people don't want to meet and they just go. So I'm like, I don't want, I'm not clicking that one. And I don't know if that's what you meant on that or, but I know that there could be other people around the world that are newly coming out and maybe they want to chat. So, I mean, what do you have to say with those little crate, the things that you check. Well, again, I feel like we want to make sure everyone has an option. And it's funny mm -hmm. you brought that up because I use chat on my Archer profile because I'm in a relationship <laughs> that is monogamous. So I put chat and friends. And for me, chat, again, it comes, it comes from the lens of like someone who works at Archer. So I very much want my profile to feel like someone, a profile that people can reach out to, provide feedback, say what they like and dislike. Um, but I do think chat is really helpful. And what we've heard from people is that it is something that they're looking for. If they're thinking about moving to an LA or New York city, they're not there right now. They, even when they come there, they might not be looking to hook up, but they do want to like have a support system. I also think it could be helpful for, I mean, the three of us are really lucky to live in cities like New York city and LA where. I assume around you, there's a ton of other queer men that you can connect yeah. with, um, become friends with, but that's not the case for the majority of the cities in our country. And I think the chat function might be a safe haven and a really great tool for those people. And and as I was asking the question, I realized, oh, you know, I think I answered my own question, but thank you for mentioning that. I appreciate that. We should ask you real quick, is Archer going to be international and in other parts of the world, or is it strictly the U.S.? We are already targeting or looking at cities for 2024 outside the U.S., so we hope to be national within the year. And we're looking at London, Tel Aviv. Madrid, Paris, Berlin, 
basically our CPO and I said, where do you want to go on vacation? And okay. we'll just launch it there. We're going on a world tour. Um, so we definitely want to be in a bunch of international cities next year. And we got to ask you, so we are live here and yes. AG asked the question, is the app focused on M for M, male for m men for men? The app is for anyone seeking queer men. So it's for gay, bisexual and queer men. Um, although to be honest, everyone is welcomed on our chair there. You will never be denied um, from creating a profile unless your photos just don't match up. I like that. Very cool. And people, I was looking it up because I was tagging you guys earlier. People can follow at Archer Dating on most social media platforms. Is that correct? At Archer Dating? Yes. We're on um, Instagram, Threads, TikTok. Yes, I'm on Threads myself. Twitter. Yep. Um, but Instagram and TikTok are, are where we're most active. I love it. Thank you so much, Michael. This has been great. And I'm, we're both signed up and keep um, follow. If people want to follow you, do you want to live, leave your um, handle? I just dropped that in the chat because I'm one step oh. ahead. So if anyone has you are questions one step ahead. <laughs> they didn't get to ask or you just like don't want to ask questions in public, feel free to DM me. Happy to answer any questions that you possibly have. So my information is there. Happy to be a resource. And if you download Archer, it's completely free. And I'm happy to hear your feedback. Well, congratulations on Archer. Let us know about those events, particularly the one tomorrow night, if you can. Yes, yeah, so I'm going to email you right after okay, this. Okay, perfect. I love it. Thanks so much, Michael. We really appreciate it. And um, Nice to meet you, Michael. Yeah. Nice to meet you, too. We're coming to LA, so you're going to get a party, too. Oh, please. <laughs> please. It was I love nice it. meeting you both. Nice meeting Bye. you. Okay. We'll see we'll see you soon. Bye. Nice. I love it. Very cool. Love it. Yay. So good. I know. I'm expanding my roster now, you see. More apps. Exactly. Exactly. Oh my god. And goodness. for everybody that wants to follow Michael, uh his Instagram is Michael K P R and K is spelled K A Y E. And the Archer date. Uh, dating app is at Archer Dating. Yep. And if you're listening to this on the next day when this comes out, I will, this is in show notes or wherever you download, I will put this as well on there. So rest assured, you'll get it one way or another. Mm -hmm. Name that song. One way <laughs> or another. Oh, yeah. I'm Look at us interviewing like we're you. Barbara Walters. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was fun. I, I, you and I haven't done an interview like this in, in at no, all. So it I was think our we, first time. How do you feel? I feel really satisfied. Mm -hmm. Hell yeah. If you will. Okay, we've got to move on to some, you know, we really want to switch gears here. And I wanted to do this the other day. And Sometimes we have these topics. Um, this was by Out.com. Out is doing this really good series called Dating Prep. So they're obviously promoting prep. And they decided to interview a guy uh, by the name of Carson Tweller. Did I say that right? Tweller. I think it's Tueller. Tueller, thank you. But Carson what do Tueller. I know? I barely speak I think, English. I think you're right, too. Carson Tueller. And he is um, was talking about the desexualization of disabled people in this really good interview that I'm going to repost on tagspodcast.com, episode 483. Some of the things that I wrote in my notes, because I just wanted to, he is talking about dating. Um, he is disabled in a wheelchair. He works out three and a half hours a day. And... He's very handsome. Did you see his profile? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. You know, some of the things that he wanted people to know about besides working out so much and that he's interested in dating is there's this thing called inspiration porn that a lot of namely straight people that see him in the gym will often post. So they'll post 
a picture of him or a disabled person that's in a wheelchair doing, say, for example, pull-ups, right? And they'll post it on their feed saying, what's your excuse type of thing. Mm -hmm. And apparently it's a phenomenon, according to Carson, because it kind of rubs people that are disabled the wrong way because it's essentially using them in a, you know, like what's wrong... Uh, what's your excuse is what they're saying, but it assumes the the role like that the, it's a struggle, that life is a struggle for them and or it's a tragedy. And he doesn't want people to think of his life as a tragedy at all or that life sucks. And it's like, no, it doesn't suck. It's different. And mm -hmm. some of the things what, where it's different that it, I also wrote in this great piece is accessibility. He says that accessibility is everything. So when he's thinking about dates, he's thinking about, particularly when he lived in New York City, spaces are small, they're tight. And he's thinking about where's the closest restroom? Is there a place for me to get into the restaurant? As we all know, in tight cities, it's not always the mm -hmm. easiest thing, even when you're able-bodied. And so... He that's one thing that he goes through. And the other thing that he wanted to talk about was the desexualization of disabled people. And he really wanted to say that our bodies can experience pleasures often in many ways that you wouldn't even think. Everyone benefits from a new idea of sex is what he is quoted as saying. And I just think it's so important because, yes, I think oftentimes I was telling you in the meeting, Teddy, that many of us would date somebody that's disabled, but we're walking on eggshells because we don't know. I'll tell a really brief story when we shot our TV pilot or the impetus for our TV pilot. And we had a person doing sign language um, for the deaf. And I mm -hmm. was saying for the hearing impaired throughout the entire broadcast, thinking that mm -hmm. I was being respectful of it. She, mm -hmm. by the way, the woman that was sign languaging was signing for deaf people, not hearing impaired. And she told me after the show, she said, just so you know. She cleaned it up for you? She cleaned it up for me and I mm -hmm. thanked her profusely. And she told me that, by the way, they're not hearing impaired, they're deaf. And the reason is no one wants, they don't, they don't want to feel like they're, they're not impaired. They're just deaf mm -hmm. and you should call it. and i said oh my god i didn't know she said no no don't beat yourself up for over it now you know and here's the way to address it and i think some of us are just like myself walking on eggshells too much and we shouldn't be we should just be embracing and incorporating people with disabilities and and it's just going to make things a lot better what what did you think when you saw this piece or in general I uh, love the piece. I think the more awareness we uh, have, uh, the better things are. And the thing about humans is that we only want to experience things that we already seen. That's why uh, people are so interested in representation because they want to see themselves doing th things that is possible for them. So the more people with disabilities that we have in media, and being sexy, uh, uh, queer as, as folk, the the reboot did a little bit of that. Um, then you can see it, and then not be afraid about it. I have hooked up with people with disabilities, and I had really good times. So uh, I recommend it. <laughs> yeah, of course. And you know, in seeing this guy, I mean, he's beautiful. He is, and. I just think for a lot of us, we're, like I said, walking on eggshells and mainly because of terminology and you don't want to say the wrong thing. But I think there needs to, I think his point is we need more stories about this out there. We need to mm -hmm. talk about the, not the desexualization, but the sexual oh, nature yeah. that everybody is sexual in nature, including people with disabilities. And that mm -hmm. the more we hear stories of this, the more, you know, when you see somebody on Archer that maybe has a disability, you're going to be like, yeah, of course, I want to, I'm yeah. open to, and you're opening up your repertoire. And so we just need more exposure like we do of every other, you know, nature in the LGBTQ plus world. Yeah. And 
people are people are people. So everybody that you're getting to know, it's a new experience. So regardless of their, you know, abilities. So, you know, you're knowing everybody. You don't know what people's boundaries are. You know, don't know what terminology they, they look for. So yep. everything is a new experience. So don't be afraid of a wheelchair or whatever the per the person is looking like. If you're interested, make yourself known. And yeah, hell yeah. Absolutely. I love it. Okay, well, we're going to... Um, we, I put the thirst trap in the feed oh. for people to start looking. But before we get to that, okay. that's just giving some of our live listeners a view of what's to come before we round out the show what's but to we, come what's to come <laughs> interpret that however you want but we have to talk about a couple stories that are in your neck of the woods including mm -hmm. uh, a vandalism that defaced lgbtq plus tributes at the iconic california beach in los angeles um, I had thought it was in Santa Monica, California, where I used to go. We're talking the Will Rogers State Beach. It's when I lived there, it was where everybody played volleyball. It was where you went to lay out, and it's still apparently going strong. They, for this particular pride, did an event to celebrate LGBTQ plus history of the Ginger Rogers Beach, a portion of the Will Rogers State Beach. Um, they painted lifeguard towers that featured progress pride flags, but they were vandalized Monday morning after they were initially enacted. It was around 7 a.m. when lifeguards realized towers 17 and 18 had been burglarized. An LAPD official said several windows were broken and a first aid kit and, and county cell phone were stolen. On top of that, Anna anti-Semitic remarks and anti-LGBTQ plus language were written over the rainbow colored walls of the towers. The incident is being investigated as a hate crime. Crazy. Crazy. Yeah. yeah. Especially since this is like literally next door to the Santa Monica Pier. And that's a place where literally every walk of life goes there. You see everything there. You see the California blonde girls. You see the jacked up jocks. You see the gay couples. You see the families with the kids. And everybody's living in harmony because you're at the pier. It's a good, a fun time. And um, the, the towers look really good. And then uh, some racist homophobe just decides to do that. And they also stole the first aid kit. How ratchet are you? Go away. Stay home. You're no one. Yeah, that's some bad karma. That's some mm -hmm. bad karma. I mean, we're seeing this all around the country. This is not by any means new information that we're seeing of vandalism. We saw it here in New York during Pride of in the in the West Village taking down Pride flags that were by Stonewall. It's just to see it manifest into now LA, a very liberal city, although New York is as well. But yeah. also the anti-Semitic, you know, combination of it all is really yeah. taking it to a next level. And we can make a bigger deal about taking the first aid kit, but it's like, wow, that is really down and awful. It's just awful. And so, like I said before, it's bad karma. It will come back it, and get you. It really, it really is. And, um, I just hope that people, you know, stay safe and like watch out for each other, especially the community that is so beautiful, the beach community. Um, so, yeah, love is love, but hate doesn't have any good consequences, y'all. So, yeah, we just wanted to tell you about that. We also wanted to tell you about since Teddy is our special guest co-host and mm -hmm. living in a city that I used to live in, in the iconic and I know all of our listeners know the iconic. Iconic mm -hmm. Abbey. The Abbey oh. apparently is up for sale. I can't believe <laughs> this. How is the Abbey, which has nearly 10,000 square feet of in the venue? It's a commercial real estate group that has bought it now. And how is this for sale? I mean, <sighs> David Cooley, I actually know from back in the day who 
purchased mm -hmm. it years ago. Yeah. Um, I thought it would be fun to share a quick story of your favorite Abby story, but real quick, what's your thoughts about it being up for sale? And do you think that somebody's going to buy it, hopefully, and keep it the Abby? They have to. Please tell me. I hope so. Um, we've we have seen a lot of uh, queer spaces go away in this area. Um, arena was like down the street from my house that doesn't exist anymore so i i hope not because um that's a, such a big staple and it's packed all the time so it's not that they're in financial trouble so i really hope that some somebody within the lgbtq plus community buys it and uh just i mean they can redo it or whatever but i hope it stays a queer space that's what my hope is yeah what do you think? that corner i totally agree with you it's uh, it's iconic. I know David Cooley probably didn't sell it without good reason. And I'm sure maybe there's a stipulation in there that it me must continue to be, please don't be a condominium, <laughs> you know, make it mm -hmm. another queer space. We could lose pump around the corner the Lisa Van Vanderpump rural space, but we can't lose the, the iconic Abbey. And if I had to share my favorite moment in time there, it was before it became a dance club and I would go there for dessert when I was trying to be an actor back in the day in the oh. early two, I think it was 1998. I went Bam. there and we would have my friend and I would go there and at 10 PM and we'd have like coffee and order these amazing cakes and eat them. And then later on, um, when it became what it was, I ended up dating one of the bartenders that oh. um, was fun and his roommate a little bit later, which was a little bit messier. <laughs> you keep it course. within the family. I kept it within the family. <laughs> of course, it got messy. Favorite memory mm -hmm. of the Abbey for you? Well, uh, the Abbey was literally the first place I visited when I, the first night I went out in LA. Uh, it's, you just gravitate toward that place. Like, it's so hard to avoid um, and I just enjoyed the music, but, but now they have two sides where you can dance. So yeah. uh, there's some more poppy and there's some more techno and I just enjoyed it. It was always a must stop. Every time I go to WeHo, it's like, even just for a drink. Um, yeah. so I just hope they keep it. I just, it's part of the bar hop scenario. It, I just it see really it is. It. Yeah. yeah. I hope anybody developer sees that. AG says, I hope they keep the Abbey, but get rid of the pickpockets. And there's, <laughs> oh, thieves. I didn't know that. No, it's I didn't know either. So sad to lose Pump. Okay. Um, the Abbey is iconic. Absolutely. Okay. Well, our last and final segment, you guys can always wait in on any of this stuff, is Thirst Trap. And this week, we're talking about straight up gay porns, 15 gay porn stars. They're asking the question, who took the best photo of the week? There's some doozies out here. I had a tough time picking out my favorite, but it's our job on an audio podcast when this get, show gets repackaged to tell you why vividly we chose the one we did. Who did you pick this week? Oh, my goodness. Oh, There's my too goodness. Many. Well, I I actually had not a hard time because Alex Fox is a, a mostly top femme. Ooh. And it's just like my... Oh, I like, see him right now. Oh, that's like like all of my needs are met in this situation, okay? Oh, so wow. Alex Fox, if you're are listening to me, I know you hang out a lot in LA. Um, yeah, hit me up. And... Uh, I, I like, um, he has like the cute eyeliner and like the fan face, but it's a very menacing cock. So, hey, who do you I pick? Have, I have to say there was too many just hanging out there with their huge dicks that I was totally turned on by, but I went for okay. Double Trouble, Ryan Finch, and Adrian Hart. Partly mm -hmm. because I love their apartment that was just loaded up with paraphernalia. It yeah. looked like there was a shelf. And I love, oftentimes in parts of my apartment, there's a lot of stuff going on. There's, I have equipment. And I have, you know, I kind of like living in chaos. If you look at the doorway, there's a pair of, I believe, pumps, red 
platform yeah that i'm wondering which one of them is going to wear there's yeah. just a lot to choose from i love the chaos and i know a lot of our listeners and my co-hosts do not like that no they on the other hand are beautiful ones a white guy with a great body and the other one's this beautiful black guy they both have great dicks great bodies great smiles they look like they would be a lot of fun to get into trouble with I'm kind of here for them. I'm talking about Ryan Finch and Adrian Hart, y'all. I'll post this on tagspodcast.com. I think I'm a little for clump to say any more. Mm-hmm. I think that's it. Like, look them up. Um. <laughs> yeah, so Doug picked uh, somebody that also has a little bit for everybody, Halter Inc. Because Ooh. Halter Inc. is uh, pleasuring himself with one of those dildos that you stick on the wall. But at the same time, he has the biggest heart on that you can sit on too. So, and he's completely tatted. He has sleeves and uh, how do you call a sleeve on the legs? Sleeves too, right? I think a sleeve on the leg. Yeah, you just got to specify the leg. Yeah. And uh, the whole chest is also tat. And uh, he kind of has like the beard, scruffy look. And, uh, and says, don't, don't forget, forget about the feet. feet. Yeah, he's showing us the feet. So it's just yum, 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 and some more yum. So I agree oh. with Doug. That's a good looking man. <laughs> I love it. Thanks so much for playing. And I will post this on tagspodcast.com. We want to thank our very special guest, Michael K of Archer App. I will list this all on tagspodcast.com so that you can start downloading the app and get moving. Thank you, Teddy Alexis. You can go to teddyalexis.com. TeddyRodriguez.com. Oh, excuse me. TeddyRodriguez.com. You can follow you on Instagram at Teddy Alexis. Any other social media that you want to throw out that I'll list on Tags Podcast? I'm on everything. Twitter, I'm on YouTube. So at Teddy Alexis, all of them. So And I meant to ask you, I don't know if you want to like announce this. I know you were in rehearsal for something. Anything you want to share with anybody here or you're not ready to share? I can share. Um, I'll I'll be performing uh, the Long Beach Shakespeare Festival. What? Uh, I know. (laughs) She's classically trained, bitches. (laughs) This summer... Yeah, uh, at the end of July. So if you're in town and you want to check it out, uh, send me a DM. I'll get you a ticket uh, because I can get you a free ticket. Uh, Yeah, thank you. Thank you for letting me promote that. Oh, my God. No, I knew it was something big, but I didn't know it was the Shakespearean Festival. (laughs) I love that. Love it. You can follow me at I am underscore Steve V on Instagram or go to the website tagspodcast.com. Thank you, Teddy, as always. So great. And always my pleasure. You. Thank you. Yes. You'll see more of him. In the meantime, continue having hot, hot, gay, gay sex. sex. Yes. I love yeah. it. Super fun. Let's see if this works because I never know what I'm doing. <laughs>